Namaste. So it looks like internet is still functioning. The government tried to shut down the internet and the Ministry of Telecommunications refused to obey. <laughs> so internet is still functioning. So I might as well upload another video. I want to talk about Brahman. And I want to encourage you to discover Brahman. This is the highest truth. I'm here, I'm looking at the beautiful, clear, tropical sky, bluer than blue, deep, high, expansive. Uh, and these are all attributes of Brahman. Meditating on the sky, meditating on space. These are good ways uh, to enter Brahman, to uh, apprehend Brahman. Even though we can't understand Brahman because it's beyond the mind. Still, we can use certain of its attributes as gateways or doors. And expansiveness is one of the best because bra, the root word br, means growth. And so Brahman means unlimited growth, an unlimited expanse of consciousness. Uh, so the essence of the spiritual path is somehow or other, directly is the best, or indirectly also works, to see Brahman, think of Brahman, conceive of Brahman as much as Brahman is conceivable, and understand Brahman, learn about Brahman from the scriptures, hear about Brahman from the realized beings, and try to think about Brahman, worship Brahman, pray to Brahman, and love Brahman huh? as one's very own self. So the moment you realize this, and you start to see that I am immeasurable. I am ever expanding. I am beyond limitations of human consciousness. I am infinite. I am all knowing and so on like this. See, this is realization of Brahman. But it's not enough, of course, to simply think like this. One has to actually realize it, actually perceive it in real time. But until that happens, there is meditation, there is worship, there is study. There's a lot of things we can do. We can do seva, we can help others who are in need or who are in spiritual ignorance and we can encourage them. And that also furthers us along our own path. That's why we do these videos. That's why we do these series. So it's good to read the scriptures, or more than read, to study them, to go deeply into the meaning. And that's because knowledge is always good. But knowledge should not be an end in itself. Knowledge, what can it do really? It can only point the finger and say, there is the reality. And then you have to go and realize that. You have to go and do the work. What is the work? Well, I already described it. Think of Brahman. Uh, see Brahman in everything. At first it's imagination. At first it's thinking. But then, over a long period of time, it gradually settles, huh? the idea settles 
into your bones and it becomes your reality. And this is self-realization. It's not like one day you wake up and something hits you like a ton of bricks, pow, and then you know, you're everywhere and everything. No, it doesn't work like that. You may get a preview, one of the path realizations that shows you what it could be like, what it will be like, but to actually attain that state permanently so that it doesn't just come and go takes a long time and a lot of work. I'm not going to kid you. I'm not going to sell you on any non-existent shortcuts because that's just imaginary. I mean, people like to imagine all kinds of pleasant things, huh? but it's just fantasy. If you want to know, read the scriptures, the Upanishads especially. You can find them on the internet on archive.org. So many Upanishads, so many editions of Vedanta Sutra. It's worth reading Vedanta Sutra, even though it's difficult, especially Shankara's commentary. It's quite difficult. But the exercise will build this brain muscle, <laughs> which like any muscle requires regular exercise to stay in shape. So this is my advice to everyone. Even in this time of great turmoil in the world, you can become immune to it. You can become immune to it all, even birth and death and karma and everything, just by this concentration of the mind on Brahman. So I urge you most strongly, most sincerely, to do that which is best for you, that which gives you happiness, not just the kind of cap happiness that comes and goes, but permanent, unconditional happiness. That is the happiness that comes from Brahman. Because Brahman is our real nature. The unconditioned is the actual reality. So that does not come and go. That stays permanently. So that must be the aim of spiritual life. Huh? Aham pramasmi, thou art that, Brahman. Thou art not the temporary phenomena of the material world. To that we say neti neti. It's not this, it's not that. It's only the one, it's only the highest, only the all that is the actual reality. And that is the aim of all spiritual life. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung.